Hello and welcome to your daily online strength coach podcast, blah blah blah, episode 26, how to not snap your shit up. Thanks Craig, I think we will believe, we will indeed believe talk about it, <laughs> that was pretty shit a segue. Uh, welcome to episode 26, it is of course still Monday the 10th of the 8th, 2015, which of course I didn't share that information with you on the last episode, because it was so out of practice, because I hadn't done any in two weeks, um, but we're back on the horse as it were, and back on this hairy stallion, and we're about to kick off for an hour we show young fella. Um, so today's question comes from the ever reliable Jimbo Jimbo Perlis. Um Leave keep leaving comments and questions on because they are always quite good and it's um, the questions are at a level that I, I quite like for this podcast. Although I don't mind getting into them a bit more nuance, I, I would I do like answering this sort of thing because I think it's um, it's a lot more practical. And it's the sort of thing that I would like this podcast to be more about more the practical end of lifting, not the airy fairy um periodization or you know the the pie in the skies the pie the pie in the sky stuff that you know that the elite lifters might worry about or the people who get paid too much money to worry about training and worry about the kind of shit that doesn't actually make a difference to most lifters this sort of stuff makes a big difference to most lifters so really like this kind of content um so we left uh, a podcast or a comment sorry on episode 23 bench press assistance uh, firstly, you and McDonald, are you planning on competing any any on competing anything soon? Uh, so I did have a again. This is a sob story. I did have a a comp lined up in April, although it was the same day as my brother's. Oh, it wasn't the same day. It was the same weekend with my brother's wedding. Um, so obviously, I did the wedding instead. So that kind of threw me for a loop. And I, not to be honest, I've not really been arsed. I wasn't really arsed. Um, finding a comp during summer. Although I am interested now in fighting a competition, however, work, etc., etc., is conspiring against the best wishes. So if anything pops up in Edinburgh, I'll do it probably. Um, I'm not really feeling the need to travel to the arse end of England or even the arse end of Scotland to do a competition, to be honest. Um, I will compete sometime. Um, I would prefer to do something this year, but if I, have, if I have to wait till later next year, then fine, I will do that. Um, so yeah I will compete when I don't know I'm in reasonably good shape just now um, probably a bit heavier or say probably a bit heavier definitely a lot heavier but then I should be um, but yeah lifts are going well bench going well squats going well deadlift we're working on but it'll come up we'll get it there um, so yeah uh, that's the answer to that question uh, Scottish 8607 also known as Jimbo Talk yourself up, pal. Nobody else is doing this with the same frequency you are. Uh, thanks a lot, Jimbo. Uh, it's not really in my nature to talk myself up, although I know I probably should do if I'm going to promote the podcast and promote the website, so I'll probably do a bit more of that. But I'm not going to tongue out my own arse. It's not really my style. But I will uh, promote it more. But thanks for the comment. Appreciate it. How about this one? How not to snap your shit up, specifically shoulders. I know you've had shoulder snaps before, what if any re what if any rehab, prehab stretches, all that jazz do you have you found useful? Should everybody do some sort of prehab and training? Is it necessary or just more fluff things? Well, first of all, if you do snap your shit off snap your sh- snap all your shit up, um it is go- it is preferable to go see Doc Schwartz. Um so we can have a look at that and see just how badly you snapped your shit up. Um uh, Doc, Doc Swartz or, or a physiotherapist or whatever medical professional you want to see is always the correct answer to this question. Um, more pertaining to the sort of stuff that I know everyone will be interested in. Um, in case anyone's wondering, I've, I have two... Sh- both of my shoulders are fucked, basically. Um, the left one's really fucked and the one on the right's kind of fucked. Uh, the one on the left... I've had three different diagnoses from three different physiotherapists. I had a physio or a PhD uh, or a physiotherapist who was doing her PhD uh, who thought it was uh, I think she thought it was AC impingement. And another physiotherapist who 
who she working with? She was working with Scott Hawker or something at the time. I can't remember. Who recommend or thought it was the same? Was an AC impingement, maybe a slight rotator cuff strain, and then I had uh, another physiotherapist who I really rate, um, who reckoned that I had a labral tear, which I think is the correct answer to be honest, because um, everything that they said, he or she said, um, totally made sense, and the diagnosis was like totally, like I thought it was totally spot on to what all the symptoms that I felt and all the things that I felt. So I reckon. Um, and I think they'd agree that I have bilateral labral tears in both shoulders. So what that means is um, that the uh, I'll probably fuck up this fuck this up. So if any physios or uh, or anyone who knows anatomy is listening, pl- please don't jump on me. Um, but yeah, the the it's kind of the joint of the humerus, the kind of the tissue that sits over the top of the head of the humerus is called the labrum. So I basically got a flap of uh, that. Basically, there's a flap out of that that like impinges movement. And causes pain when it kind of gets into certain certain uh, planes of motion, like the one on the left, worse than the one on the right. And um, if I was to tell you what I did it doing, my bet is weighted dips. Used to do them loads. Used to love them. Just doing a fucking mentally retarded program um, inspired by T Nation, where I was pressing six seven times a day. Um, I don't think it was acute. I can't remember if it was acute or not, but I remember at the time it was like two thousand seven. Um, it started 2007, maybe the end of 2006. Um, I was trying to do like inclined bench with a bar that was painful, and it was one night in particular when I was trying to sleep, and it was fucking ridiculously painful. Couldn't sleep properly. Um, of course, never seen a physiotherapist or a doctor because I'm an idiot. Um, lived with the pain for about seven months before, I, and then it took about five months before I started benching dumbbells. Um, stayed on dumbbells for probably about six, seven weeks, and then moved on to barbell. And, it's kind of been touch and go since. Like I've had a few periods where I had to take like a month, two months off bench press, but I've been managing it. Um, it's been okay. Uh, so yeah, my shoulders are pretty fucked. Uh, so for my specific problem, um, if I was to sort it properly, I probably need uh, surgical intervention. Probably need some anchors to put the the label tear down. And I'm sure there's some there's some like uh, grotty bits of the shoulder I probably need cleaned out or sorted out so probably fairly extensive surgery but I can bench press pain free so fuck the surgery I'm fine uh, what I can't do is I basically I can't snatch um, anything that goes into overhead external rotation is a big no-no especially ballistic um, movements in those ranges so snatches are just a, just a no-no it just can't, can't happen even with the demo and for like weightlifting workshops with a bar can cause two days of pain I think it's, it's pretty fucked Um so yeah, my snatching days are over. And to be honest, I'm not really that fast. <laughs> it's kind of cool to train, but fuck it, bench is better. Um, so as regards to like any prehab rehabs, I was really specific to what's wrong with you. To be honest, um, the shoulder is a very complex joint, and it's a shit joint at that. It's not really a load bearing joint. So the, the common ones people say will be rotator cuffs or for spinatus, um, all the other ones, all the other three of the other ones, um. They'll get, uh, they can get strains or they can get impinged if you take them through. Like, um, like for example, an easy example: if you do flat bench press where your, your elbows flared and your elbows travel far past the body and you stretch the shoulder capsule, um, it can get, it can be possible to strain in for spinatus or to inflame the posterior bit of the shoulder capsule, um, or you can impinge something if you have poor motor recruitment or blah blah, poor range of motion, blah blah. They're basically, it's hugely complex and. The pathology as such is quite complex as well. Generally, a lot of the stuff that you'll see, like the face pulls and the the stretches and all of that's fucking wasted time, to be honest. Um, if you get a specific workload, so for example, if you've had if you've had a surgical intervention and you are following a, a, a prescribed rehab plan that is targeted to strengthen the motor patterns or strengthen the muscles involved in a, in a in the correct manner or the manner that they're looking to that's appropriate to your goal so um for example if you're a rugby player or a cricket player then you might need to do a lot more kind of endurance work or you might be looking to do a lot more ballistic work a lot more proprioceptive work because you need to catch pass whatever like that that kind of prehab rehab is absolutely essential it should be carried out at all costs um, apologies for that, just hit my metal desk down. Um, however, for the for the generalities of lifting, 
that stuff doesn't really help unless you've unless you have a professional that's given you a targeted rehab plan that's been put together and a rationale behind it and it's all targeted for different reasons then by all means follow that plan and you should do that because that's a good thing to do and if you're just pulling general shit off the uh, internet then you may as well just um, swing around the wheel of fortune and just pick out like eight rehab exercises because it's about as accurate as what you'll be doing pulling it off the internet and what I'd say to if you do get um, painful shoulders here's something that will definitely help don't do any exercises that hurt it you fucking retard <laughs> if even you get like a 1 out of 10 on the pain scale just don't fucking do it so with your particular shoulder problem if you're okay with incline bench okay with flat bench but shoulder press hurts just take shoulder press out of your program it's that simple um, if Arnold press hurts but shoulder press is cool do shoulder press don't do Arnold press again it's that simple pain management is probably the number one thing you can do because um, what pain management will do, it'll stop the area getting inflamed, it'll stop it getting damaged further, it'll actually give you a chance to let whatever is hurt recover, if it can recover, um, if it's a liberal tear or some kind of joint problem, then you're fucked. So it needs to, the, the, but the result is the same, you still just stay out of anything that's painful. Um, so yeah, pain management is your number one go-to. Uh, your number two go-to is keep the pressing in your program appropriate. Don't just do loads of assistance for the sake of it, because to be honest, it doesn't really work. So if you want to get, if you want to, if you're powerlifter and you want to bench press, then bench in your program. Um, fuck dumbbell press, fuck incline press, fuck shoulder press. Just bench, um, and probably variations thereof. Through trial and error, you'll be able to find like a frequency, a volume, and an intensity that you can train at. That's not going to set off your 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 shoulder symptoms or your pain. Um, what I would do is I would start off at one session a week and use a real simple program like 5 sets of 5 at 75% week 1, 5 sets of 4 at 80% week 2, 5 sets of 3 at 85% week 3, add 2.5 kilos and just keep going with that. And then if you feel either you're stalling out with that or you think you're handling pretty easy, add a second day, then look at maybe... You run the same program, but day two's maybe 90% or 80% of that load. Or maybe you run it with close grip bench press, or maybe you run it with an assistant, assistance exercise. If you find that frequency is good, go to three days, and then I probably wouldn't go past three days. I think that's probably pretty good, to be honest. Um, I know some people bench press six days or whatever, but I think three's good for me. So three's good for me anyway. I wouldn't go past three. And two to three is kind of my sweet spot, and that's that's what I stick to. Um, yeah, so those like pain management is definitely the number one thing. Number number two is make pressing goal specific and do as little as you can manage and still get strong off. So if you can get strong off one session a week, uh, we're on that same cycle. Just fucking stick to that. Don't change it until you stall or you feel like you're not getting. It's not as quick as you'd like. In which case, you can start increasing frequency. Would be the next thing I would increase. Um. Then if you're up to three days a week and you're just benching and you find, well, like I'm stalling on that and I'm, I'm, my, my training's pain free, then you can look at different assistance exercises, a bit more hypertrophy work, whatever. But add things one thing at a time. So I, I think um, rule number one is pain free. Rule number two is make the press appropriate. R- rule number three is keep the volume as minimal as possible and still get strong. Rule number four um, is add, a, add assistance one exercise at a time pressing assistance so if you're benched three times a week and you start adding assistance work add one exercise a session and probably give it like three weeks and then if you're something three after three weeks you can add something else and so on and so forth um rule number five is three pulls for every one press and um, just to build up that upper back strength i think it's essential one of the things that actually helped me a lot since my last kind of bout uh, was wide grip pull-ups um just doing that has helped an absolute shit ton. I was getting a lot of pain at the start of the year. Uh, kind of flared up again last year, and I was doing different shit to try. I was doing like all the physiobolics, like the thumb up raise, fucking external rotation, face pulls, all that shit. Nothing helped. I did wide grip pull ups, and as soon as I started doing that, my program shoulders settled down. Sweet. So I don't know what the actual causation was, or maybe I just actually gave it enough time to settle down or whatever. But. And wide grip pulls are what worked for me, and I've kept them in since, and I've been pain free for pretty much for eight months, so that's been sweet. Um, so yeah, three pulls for every one press. Um, and I think if you do those five things, to be honest, you're not going to do much better than that in your programming. Um, 
to, like you can get some traction with the, the warm up. I mean, it's a good warm up. It's a good general warm up. It'll get the blood flowing, and it'll get the activation going. It'll get you ready if you want to do like the diesel crew shoulder saver warm up or whatever kind of warm up you want to do is fine. It, so, a warm up's better, no warm up. So that's the way I would look at it. But is it going to help? Like, is it going to strengthen up the areas? Is it going to do this? Not unless you've actually been prescribed it by a physical therapist who's looked at you and, or, or a professional who's looked at you and you and they have a good handle on it and they know what they're talking about, then absolutely it's not going to help because you may as well just pluck fucking exercises out of the air for as the, the accuracy that you're going to have. I um, hope that's answered your question. Um, so I'll be back with you Wednesday for episode 27. I'll probably do an hour doubleheader in. So if you like to hear my sultry tones again, uh, then just leave a comment below send an email speedpowerperformance gmail.com join the forums at castironstrength.com noise is up till next time this is Mark signing off and remember man this is all just advice at the end of the day I should oh, man I should play the hardest ones uh, fuck this right up oh well it's not going to be as funny but still do it just give me a second Just a second, it's totally gonna be worth it. Why the fuck? This is why you need to do um, you need to do some pre planning. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. You can do whatever. Fuck you want to do. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do.